this video, we'll demonstrate how to use the pin map function to create maps that you can use to describe your custom fixture or test jig to CableEye. In particular, we'll discuss when you use custom pin maps that you create, as opposed to the default CB board maps supplied by Cami. We'll differentiate between the two types of pin maps, fixed and CB board. Note that it is a fixed map we'll be creating later in this video. Before beginning with the actual pin map demonstration, we'll talk about how to set up your tester for use with the pin map function. Then, in the main body of this video, we'll create an example fixed pin map. Pin maps describe the custom mating connector hardware that provides the interface between your harness or cable under test and the cable eye tester. You may have a completely custom interface directly attached to the tester. However, typically, you mount your mating connectors on CB boards specifically designed for this purpose, such as the CB8 board shown here. What does pin map do then? Briefly, it associates, or maps, the pins on your mating hardware with test points on your tester. Without such a mapping, you would only see raw test points as a result of test acquisition. With pin map, however, you see an accurate representation of your harness or cable when viewed graphically, and the netlist contains the pin numbers from your connectors. As we mentioned previously, there are two types of pin map, fixed maps and CB board maps. You use fixed maps to describe how all the mating connectors you're using attach to the tester. If there are five mating connectors as part of your test setup, then there will be five connectors in the map. There may be multiple boards on separate banks, each with multiple connectors, but all have a fixed position. This 128 test point interface, for example, would be described using a fixed map. It is connected to the tester using flat cables running from these headers to fixed banks on the tester. CB board maps describe the mating connectors mounted on a single board. This board can be moved to any bank on the tester and is typically used with one or more other CB boards. Each CB board contains intentionally shorted unique test points that allow cable eye to identify the board and also where it is attached to the tester thus allowing you to change boards and move them around the tester without having to change the software configuration. Creating CB board maps is a little more involved than creating fixed maps, so in the remainder of this video, we'll show you how to create a fixed map and leave CB board mapping for a subsequent presentation. First, attach your mating connector boards to the tester exactly in the positions in which they will be used. For the purposes of this demonstration, we'll be using two standard CB15 boards and mapping only the DB25 female on the left and the DB25 male on the right. Note that we're mapping the mating connectors. So, for the DB25 female, we're mapping the DB25 male on the left, and for the DB25 male, we're mapping the female connector on the right. In order to use pin map to automatically assign test points, you'll need to use the probe we shipped with your unit. This attaches to the DB9 connector on the right side of the tester. You must also set the tester to use 152 test points using the three position switch on the left side of the tester. Be sure this switch is in the topmost position, marked 152, or cable I won't be able to use the probe. You're now ready to create a pin map for your interface. To start pin map, click the map button on the left side toolbar. Now, to create a fixed map, click on the FX button at the top left of the pin map toolbar. Pin map then asks you for a name for your map. This can be any text that will help you identify the map in the future. You can see your map now appears in the fixtures list. Now add your connectors to the map. In our case, we'll be adding just two connectors, but you can add as many as you need to fully describe your interface. To add a connector, click on the New Connector button. Now type in the name of the connector to add. Note that this is the connector on the cable or harness under test, not the one on your interface board, which will be the opposite gender. So here, we add a DB25 female for the connector in bank 1. Next, we do the same thing to add the DB25 male connector, which will be mapped to bank 2. On the rightmost pane, you'll see a set of tabbed windows. There is one tab for each connector you added, and a Properties tab that contains information about the entire pin map. If we briefly look at the Property tab, 
we'll see some mapping rules check boxes. The first two items apply only if you have expansion units and indicate what to do with the 24-pin bank on the base module. In general, you can ignore these. Check the third item, Remove Unused Connectors from Cable, if you want Cable I to remove connectors that exist in the map but to which nothing was connected when you acquired test data. By default, Cable I includes all map connectors in your test data whether anything was connected to them or not. The high pop parameters impose maximum voltage limits when using this interface with an HVX model tester. Now ready to specify test point to pin mapping for each of the connectors. Click on the first connector tab. This page contains some summary information about the connector and also a grid that will specify the actual map. Connector pin numbers appear on the left and the physical test points that they are connected to will be filled in in the next column. In the display name box, enter a short name for the connector as you would like to see it identified on the cable drawing and netlist. For example, you may use the J number convention to identify your connectors. Now click on the first row in the netlist. Go to the middle pane and click the scan button. Your probe is now active. You are going to use the probe to touch each pin in sequence so that pin map can discover the test point to which it's connected. For the DB25 connector, we start with a shell. Touch the probe to the shell. Note that a test point is registered in the grid and the selection moves to the next pin. Now touch the probe to pin 1. A test point is registered for pin 1 and the selection moves to pin 2. Proceed in this manner through all the pins on the connector until you get to the last one. Click the stop button when done. The last pin map row is always marked LED and allows you to specify a test point to use to blink an LED under macro control to indicate which connectors an operator should attach cable ends to. If you're not using that functionality, just leave this blank. Note that the test points for the connector are now completely filled in. There are two test point columns, relative and absolute. These are only different if you use bank or test point offsets, which can help reading maps for large interfaces. In this demonstration, we're not using offsets, so these columns are the same. We can now proceed to the next connector. Again, enter the display name for this connector, and then click on the top item in the map grid. We are now ready to use the probe to create the map. Note that we're ringing out the mating connector for a DB25 male, which is a female connector. If, as in this case, the probe can't access the pin contacts, you can use an attachment to the probe, which can be as high-tech as a pair of alligator clips and a wire. Click the scan button to start the probe. As before, first touch the probe to the shell. Then proceed through the connector, touching each pin in sequence. If you accidentally touch the same pin twice, you get a warning from pin map. You can either ignore the mistaken probe or keep the mapping if it is indeed accurate. In this case, we'll click the top button to ignore it as an accidental touch. You can then just keep on ringing out the connector where you left off, but be sure to double check with the connector display.
to make sure that you are resuming from the correct pin. Click the Stop button when done. Your map is now complete. Click on the green checkbox to exit editing mode and keep your changes. Note that clicking on the red X box will forget everything that you just did. Now click the Save button on the left panel to save your changes to disk. You can now use the map you just created to acquire cable data. Click on the Map button on the left side toolbar to toggle back to the main cable eye functions. To use fixed maps instead of the default CB board mapping, go to the Connectors menu and select Custom Fixture Maps. Now go to the Maps menu and select the map you just created. Note that your map name now appears in the Active Map area of the Match Data window. This indicates that the next test cable or learn cable acquisition will be done using your new map. Click the Test Cable button. We now see the acquired cable data, a DB25 female tagged with J1 on the left and a DB25 male tagged with J2 on the right.